All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town manager's office here in the town of Amherst. This evening, we are recording a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. I am going to um, make sure that I've pressed record appropriately. I have. And this video will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel probably by the end of this week. At this time, I would like to recognize one of the co-chairs of the Cultural Council, Julianne Applegate, and I will make her host. Have a great meeting, everyone, and thanks for your service. Thank you, Angela. Thank thanks, you. Angela. Great, I will read the, the script, which I'll bungle my way through. Um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so um, uh, in, in the following manner. And I believe that is on the town website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that pu the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post the meeting on the amherstmass.gov website um, and um, any other comprehensive recorded proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Uh, Matt, I'm going to make you co-host once I figure that out and I will hand it over to you for the agenda. All right, great. Hi, everybody. Um, and let me just say that uh, Eleanor will be joining us shortly. I was just talking to her, but I think we should go around and uh, confirm that everybody can hear and be heard. Um, so, why don't I just start with, I know we can hear Julie. Um, uh, Kimberly, welcome. Hi. Hi, great to see you. Good to see you too. Um, Sylvie? Hello. Hi there. Cody? Hey. Cody? Rachel? Hello, everyone. Hello, Rachel. Welcome back stateside. Yay. Thank you. And I, I, I just <laughs> saw your email, Matt, and that's fine. So Okay, great, great. And then I don't think Eleanor is here yet, but I know she's hopping on in just a second. So that is great. Um, and I'm actually driving at the moment, so I don't have the agenda right in front of me, but um, I do not see any members of the public in our um, waiting room. So I don't think we're going to have any public comment then, but we always hold and make uh, time for public comment as it arises. So if folks join, they can raise their hands. Um, and I think we do have some minutes that need to be approved, but Juliet, I'm gonna suggest we table that until our next meeting, just for the sake of um, like, let's, let's get to the fun part, which is I would really love to let our new members introduce themselves to um, the group and just kind of share a little bit about your background and how you well, found I out about the cultural introduce council. I think we should introduce ourselves to them first and not put them completely on the spot. Ah, okay, that's even so better. Matt, how sure. about you tell us about yourself one more time? <laughs> okay, that's a great idea. Um, oh, and I see Eleanor is joining now too, so we can get her Excellent. audio checked. Um, yeah, my name is Matt Holloway. I've, I've only been living in Amherst actually for about five years. And the Cultural Council has been a big way for me to get to know folks in town because when I moved here, um, we were we had we had our first son maybe two months after we moved here, and uh, I was looking we were looking for ways to get connected to folks, and then this whole pandemic thing hit, and I learned about the cultural council, and it was meeting on Zoom, and so it was really just a fun and, and unique way to get access to the um, to the Amherst community, and so you know I have some background in arts uh, and filmmaking things like that, but but really I'm just kind of you know interested in in having a stake in the town that I live in, so. Uh, this has been a wonderful way for me to be engaged. And uh, I've been on, I guess I'm going to my fourth, this will be my fourth grant cycle and my third serving as co-chair with Julianne. And I think we've we've really developed a great little team um, between the two of us and, and amongst our existing members. And it's just, just one of my favorite things about living in Amherst is being on the Cultural Council. And, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stop there and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pass the talking stick back to you, Julianne. Okay, thank you. And uh, like Matt, I haven't lived in Amherst all that long, moved here in 2016. Um, now I can't remember whether I started in 2018 or 2019 with the Cultural Council, uh, but it was before the pandemic. Uh, I think it was 2019. Yeah, and, and like Matt, I wanted to get to know people here. Um, 
career wise, I'm, I'm, I work in fashion technology and, uh, I'm a designer, but, you know, along the way to that, I I've always been, you know, involved in the arts. So acting, singing, painting, all that, all that good stuff. And, um, was really excited to have the opportunity to join the cultural council and really, um, get to know people, but to also be a catalyst of, of having culture and arts happen so the community can get together around those things. And, you know, definitely the breaks were kind of put on with the pandemic. And I'm just so excited that it's so wonderful that, you know, the block party is on Thursday and we'll be there live and in person. I'm so glad to meet you both and, and uh, to work with you. Um, Rachel, as uh, another longstanding member, I guess I'm the 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 longest standing member now. Right. Um I joined right after you, not long after Julian. Yeah. Hi everyone. Nice to see you and um I think aside from Julian here, Eleanor is the only other person I've seen I've met in person and we that just happened last week. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um nice to see you all. I um also moved <clears throat> excuse me to Amherst in um like the very end of 2015 um from japan via australia so um it was a big change coming back to to you know this country and um to the this part then this part of the state and everything but i uh have a background in literature and primarily visual arts i've done a lot of work in museums um art gallery um and uh what else kind of arts education and um, also children's literature. That's one of the things that I do um, as a writer and a reviewer. And it's been really interesting working um, on the, serving on the Cultural Council. The, one of the former co-chairs actually recruited me for, for this position. And um, anyway, so it's, I look forward to working with all of you. Um, I'll stop there. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Cody? I'm looking forward to seeing Cody in person. I see him in person a lot for hockey because my son plays hockey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just on spouts. Uh, I wear so many different hats. Both local, state, and national. So I'm pretty busy. Um, I'm, I'm currently outside of work. I'm a student at you must be able um I'm famous the counts of since I believe last August so this will be my second grand Cycle. Um, will be interesting this time around. See that I'm way more busy, but we yeah. got this. So, yeah, nice to meet you folks. <laughs> and I, I, you know, Cody, it's so cool because you know you really have brought some great ideas and one of them was to do the showcase stage at the block party when um when you know it was unexpected and beyond our control that we didn't get to do the event in may cody said no we need to do something sooner we can't wait a whole year and here we are so really excited to work with you for another year um thank you eleanor and then Hi. we can put Sylvie and Kimberly on the spot. <laughs> Perfect. 
Um, I joined the Cultural Council at the same time as Cody, I believe, in August of last year. Um, I am an Amherst College student. I am a junior, so I guess I started in the fall of 2021 at the college. Um, and I always knew it was very important to me to be kind of involved in the place where I went to school, um, kind of beyond the bounds of the college. Um, and I did a little bit of like volunteering in my first year, but a lot of it was virtual and it didn't help me feel that like connected, um, even though I met some great people through it. But I learned about this through an op-ed in our student newspaper, um, Cole Graper Mitchell, who was like a previous member of the council, wrote this amazing opinion article about his time on the cultural council and how much it had impacted him, how much he had learned from all of you. Um, and I was really moved by that. So I decided to apply because art has kind of always been a very important part of my life and an important way of how I connect with other people and see other people connect. So I'm so excited for the second grand cycle. And I'm so, so excited for the block party on Thursday um, because that's just kind of so representative of everything. I hope that the cultural council is like able to bring and do for Amherst and how I'm able to offer up my time. Um, yeah, and it's been so great to meet such wonderful people. Like, yeah, now I've met Matt and now Rachel at the Mead the other day and Sylvie, obviously, <laughs> since we go to school together. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm very happy with all the connectivity that ACC has brought me. Can't wait to see you on Thursday, finally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> all right. So, um... Kimberly, you were here first today, so how about you? Hi, my name is Kimberly. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I was born in Zimbabwe, but I've lived all over the United States, and now I go to UMass Amherst. I'm a sophomore, and I'm studying public health and economics, um, and I joined um, this council because I really wanted to look into ways to get involved in the community. I'm really interested in a career in public service and a career where I, you know, inter interact with people in my community, build connections. So I thought this was a perfect way to do that. And I'm really like inspired by, you know, the work and the projects that are um, seen by this council. So I just wanted to take part in it and yeah, also see what I can offer to the community. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Welcome, we're really excited to have you. And Sylvie. Hi, I'm Sylvie, and I go to school with Eleanor, so I'm also a junior at Amherst College, and I'm an environmental studies major. And um, I actually also found out about the Cultural Council through Cole's article, um, and I just have been, I just took a little longer than Eleanor to actually submit my application and everything, but I'm really excited to be here. Um, I grew up in kind of a larger place than Amherst, and so I really appreciate the small town feel and the feeling that you can get involved much more easily and you can know people walking down the street. Um, and I also did some volunteering during my first and second years here. And so I'm really excited to get involved in a different way. Great. And your timing was perfect in the end because we had space available for you by the time you reached out, right? <laughs> Thank you. So nice to meet you. I'm glad you joined. Okay, Matt, uh, I guess we should mention that uh, we have another council member, Christy Anderson, and I um, hope you'll all enjoy getting to know her soon. Uh, she's on faculty at which university is in Toronto, and Tuesdays she lectures and has office hours, so she was not able to join us tonight. But she lives right across the street from Matt. You there, Matt? Yeah, yeah, we re recruit our neighbors. That's part of the um, part of the gig. But no, that's that's really great. So Eleanor and and Sylvia, I hope you'll both write amazing, inspirational articles for the next generation. And then and then Kimberly, maybe you know you can write an article for UMass too. But uh, we're just thrilled to have you both, Kimberly and Sylvia, and, and welcome. Um, so uh, without looking at the agenda right in front of me, I'm gonna suggest we jump out of order just a smidge and just get a couple of quick business items out of the way. Just things that we want to make sure we we get locked in, and then we can move on. Um, but and you for, do have a hard stop tonight at seven, right? I, yeah. I, I do. I have to I have to step away, unfortunately. Um, OK, well, let's just think, keep going. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I mean, Rachel's got probably the most interesting thing of the night to talk through. And if I hop off, uh, I'll, I'll regret missing it. But I you know, but I think that's that's definitely something to really have fun and explore. Um, 
but Julianne and I need to, so, so for Kimberly and Sylvia's sake, I'll just say really quickly that the, um, our, our, our work on the calendar year is kind of, it's very heavy in, um, November and December, you know, late October, all of November and then into December, we, we tend to meet, uh, on non-holiday weeks. We tend to meet twice a week for, for that span. And of course I, you know, we told you that at the, at the interview, um, the rest of the year, it's, it's kind of like fun and entrepreneurial. And we just, we do little things and we come up with crazy ideas, like doing the block party or doing these accessibility videos. I mean, all kinds of different sort of local projects that we do, but, um, get, making sure that we have enough meetings over that six, six to eight week span is really kind of our biggest priority because we have to give every application um, its due sort of due attention. And I think, and Julianne and I, we haven't really, we haven't really discussed like sort of the, the way that we'll process all these applications, but we've, I think we've honed it down to a pretty efficient and, and meaningful process where we have meaningful discussion about the grants um, over a few years. So, so it'll be good, but, but we do want to talk about like the, the frequency of dates that we're going to meet um, in that, in that time period. And as Julianne already alluded to, Christy, one of our um, other members has a, has a hard commitment on Tuesday nights that sh that's not going to be um, viable. So I guess we were, Julianne and I were kind of exploring maybe potentially like a Monday, Monday, Thursday night um, sequence, basically for about six weeks, minus like the Thanksgiving week and then any other holidays um so i guess I, I just want to put that out there for like discussion if 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 folks have a class on monday or thursday nights or or some kind of standing obligation that they can't do those two nights kimberly says no rachel and eleanor uh oh <laughs> okay rachel first can't do mondays sorry how about okay, the rest can't. of you okay. okay let's see what eleanor has there um on thursday nights i have work that starts at seven so i have a cut off at seven but i could do before that and then you know honestly if that worked for everyone i could see about getting it moved so would would a five or five thirty start work for anyone we've been keeping it later i know that could be really tough but it for me that would be good is let's let's hear from everyone about a five or five thirty start on thursday in particular Sorry to double you up, Eleanor, but this this it's going to get tight with all this this uh, grant yeah. cycle. Rachel, five or five thirty two early for you. It's good. Sylvie, for Thursday it's fine, but I have a bi weekly Monday like four to eight commitments. So that's kind of sounding different. like Monday's going to be really tough. Matt, I really should get your timing five or five thirty is that impossible for you or okay it's not impossible it's not great but that's okay i i just want to say one thing now we have we have six on the call and how many missing just just christy yeah is that right i thought we had there's seven of us here oh that's <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> my we arithmetic. We yeah the arithmetic was in my strength yeah, not counting myself. So yeah. we have we have we have eight active members. We have one vacancy currently. Um, so we only we need five members for a quorum, and these deliberation meetings need to have five members in attendance. So you know if 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 it's a biweekly commitment, Sylvie, then that's something we might we might be able to just work around. Um, even even Julianne and I don't necessarily make every single deliberation meeting, although as co chairs we kind of feel like we should, but but sometimes it doesn't happen, and it's okay. Um, so I just want to put that out there that I don't think we should do Mondays if Rachel can't do any Mondays. I don't think we should do Tuesdays if Christy can't do any Tuesdays, but I think we are going to have to talk about, um, you know, Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, and, but doing back-to-back -back nights is really not, that's yeah, not realistic for anybody, I don't think. Um, is yeah. it okay to try a doodle poll and then just um, take the... We, we, we can do that, although often when you get into the, the doodle poll there's so many options, right? So I think what we're trying to do is align um, on on what's workable. So for instance, being able to do a five or 5.30 start time, I haven't heard from Cody where he is with, with that. Like, is that even an option? It sounds like Thursdays could be a strong night, uh, but we will finalize with the doodle poll to make sure we really do have quorum commitments for everything that we're laying out also. Um, I just don't want to put something together that's meaningless or put something out there that's too broad. 
Um. I know. No, but what is it? November. Thirteenth, I think I'm in DC. Okay. So outside that, I'm somehow Monday, Tuesday, so fine. Um, my work does my to spring up. Oh, hey, can you go to, like, Colorado this week or research? I never know, but, yeah. But as of now, yes. Yeah. yeah, and you you were great last year as far as really trying to, you know, all of us, we all try to make every session that we can because, you know, things things come up and we really do need a quorum. And one of the things that we'll all see when we get into the grant cycle, it's pretty fast paced. You know, basically the grants close, we get these panel books, which are now digital, but they're hundreds of pages of long, right? And we're going to bring everybody into our system of how we go through this huge amount of data and deliberate and get through. But it's um we've got to keep to a schedule to to be able to 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 complete this work in a meaningful way on time. So it it is going to take two sessions a week. Um I think I have enough information now, Matt, unless you've got another thing to to add. Yeah. I, I think I think Rachel's right. I think at this point with what we have We'll yeah. put it into a doodle and we'll just do our best. My my thought is probably it'll be Thursdays and then alternating Mondays or Tuesdays. Um, you know, just w w whatever it takes to make sure we have a quorum. I think that's probably most realistic. But but we'll we'll do a doodle and, and then we'll find out the actual numbers. Like you know, yes, Kimberly, please. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty much available like every day at night as long as I know in advance. It's just my last classes tend to end at like 5.15. So like a 5.30 start would be doable. Thank you for that. That's really helpful. Okay. So and just to keep it in my mind, Rachel, you're 100% blocked for Monday nights. And then Sylvie, every other Monday, you might be, you would be blocked. Would you mind shooting me an email, Sylvie, with which Mondays those are. So when I do the doodle poll, I can look at that versus the Monday, Tuesday alternation that uh, Matt was saying that way. Hopefully we have you, even if we don't have Rachel. And then on the Tuesdays we have, wouldn't have Christy. Yeah. I'm going to run with that. Okay. We'll so, sorry, Julian, just <laughs> please. Hey, um, what are the window of dates we're talking about? So sometime from the end of October to the end of December, is that I think it's more like the middle of October. I'm trying to think. Um, oh, so the 17th or something like that. or 20th. Yeah, so usually, I mean, generally, Rachel, we look at like the last week of October to the first week of December, basically. Right, it's so like six it's whole book. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think this, this is great. And, and by the way, Sylvia and Kimberly, I know this is not the most thrilling part of the work, but you know, if we don't, it's like, we, we got to get the basic dates out there and then we, and then we yeah. can, and then we can really move into some rich conversations about, it's just so much fun to look at. Last year, we looked at 93 of these separate grants and, you know, they're all quirky. Some come in at, you know, $10,000, some come in at $200. And it's just, it really is a rich and, and fun way to connect with the community that, that we live in. So um, I'd like to add the, to that, that what yeah, one thing that we will do is, uh, we will have a meeting in October just before the end of the grant cycle. And that'll be a faster meeting, but um, maybe it'll be a little longer because I think we're gonna do two things there. One, go over the surveys that Rachel's gonna present to us here in a moment and uh, and learn from them. And then we'll also kind of do a, uh, go run through some examples of how we kind of score 
and validate and the information that we're looking through with the grants, because, you know, like Cody said, this is, you know, my second year going through the grant cycle. It's going to be different this year. It's, it's a lot. So what we did last year for everyone was we, we kind of did a session as if we were deliberating it with some examples. So um, you could get a, a really good overview of what you need to evaluate. We're not going to throw 800 pages of materials at you. And a lot of it's just filler stuff, by the way, without, without any criteria. So um, we'll do that sometime. I would say probably um, what the week of maybe the um, 9th of October is when we should shoot to do that. So I will correspond about that as well. Okay, Matt. Well, I feel bad because you're the one who's been hyping it up, but I'm just going to say this block party is going to be incredible. I mean, it really is one of the coolest things that this little town does. And Rachel, some of the some of the responses in the survey really talked about how as a college town, Amherst should have more of a vibrant downtown arts and culture scene. And this is one night where that's not true. I mean, I think last year, it was something like 3,000, 4,000 people all on Pleasant Street in, in downtown Amherst. I mean, it really does have the feel of like, a much bigger town or city kind of kind of event and so what we've done thanks to cody is we worked with excuse me the organizers of that event to have our own stage for our own for some of our own grantees there's something we've been talking about wanting to do in some format for a while so it's just so exciting to have it happening and i i don't have them in my car right now but julianne has printed t-shirts we have amherst, amherst cultural council t-shirts we're going to have signage um, and a table. So basically, I can, we'll I have can our send some of that if you if you want. I think I can at least. OK, yeah, we'll, we'll have our we'll have our. Oh, yeah. Anybody's on. I mean, everybody gets one who's on the council, but then volunteers definitely, you know, we'd ask that. I, mean, I think we we're planning on wearing them um, or not. You don't have don't feel pressure, but, you know, you're welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> um, It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they do. That they, I mean, we have a we have a brilliant fashion designer or fashion technologist <laughs> um, designing them, so we're in good hands. I feel like, um, but yeah, we get to show off uh, five or six of our grantees, you know, and then we put it out to all of them and those who express interest and then follow through with like the the planning sequence. They got a spot, and actually, Paul Sticka and the Acoustica Band, who's one of our grantees, actually got a spot on the main stage. So that's really cool for them. They're they're fun. They're kind of like excuse me, like a Tom Petty cover band, which I realize is pretty like <laughs> middle of the road, you know, white bread Americana, but, but they are fun and they're really talented. I mean, it's, 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 it's a good time. Um, but I think we, you know, we have a really fun range of, of folks and, and there's, there, are, the schedule is out there. I don't have it in front of me right this second, but the schedule is out there. Um, and so what we're hoping for is, you know, we, we want to just get the word out about the ACC, but we do explicitly want to try to fill these last two, um, vacancy. Well, this, we have one vacancy currently, and then we may have another one coming soon. So, so we really want to get some good recruits uh, for for future members. Oh, awesome! Thank you. Um, okay. So, what what we're gonna have at our table is this is like um, I guess a two foot by three foot print out that's going to be laminated and adhered to the top of the table. So, when we're talking to people, uh, we could explain who we are and what we do, and there are links. The mcc.org, that's where people would go to create a smart, simple account and be able to apply with us. Uh, the survey that Rachel's going to present here, you click this, you go to that QR link, it brings it right up in that that uh, survey doc thing on Google. And then this is our Amherst Mass um, .gov cultural council link. And that's where, as we're talking to people, we can direct them towards our guidelines or last year's grants to see what that was like. So um, then the other piece that we have is this is um, the showcase stage, which is for our grantees, as opposed to uh, some of the other entertainment that's going on. Matt, I got to thank you so much for really leading the efforts and working with the BID and, and the artists. And Eleanor, I believe you helped out too. I did nothing. So if I'm not crediting correctly, it's because I have <laughs> nothing. Uh, all the heavy lifting was done and I, I just get to go and enjoy. So these are our acts. We have two sandwich board signs, the kind you see like out in front of a restaurant, like an A-frame that we'll put on either side of the stage. 
uh, so folks will know um, who they're seeing and that they are there as part of um, our cultural council. And I'm going to turn it over to Matt and I'm going to run and get at least one t-shirt because I gave him all the t-shirts. I, guys... <laughs> I know you gave them to me and then I forgot to bring them to the um, Zoom. Sorry. Um, so I guess I, sh I should have said there's two big goals for us at this table. I mean, number one is exposure for for recruiting new members. I think that's always going to be, you know, has to be one of our main goals um, because, you know, our core work requires us to deliberate on these grants and that takes a full quorum. Um, so getting exposure and doing that is is kind of one of our two goals. And then the other one, the time will be open for um, several more weeks after, you know, after this block party. Our grant cycle stays open until October 18th. Um, to tell artists and culture. Matt, we're losing you. Gathering. Matt. Hello, Matt. Tell them that the grant cycle is open for them. Um, and then Julianne. Oh, sorry. Did you want to show the t-shirt? I, I do. And your audio is coming in and out. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it's so hard to you know, have a connection or anything. So this is one of the t-shirts, there's two colors. We just, you know, we got to thinking that there we're, we're there and I don't know, it would have, would have cost extra money to put staff on the back, but you know, um, just something so that we can officially be recognized as, as a group and, and promote. And, um, so we've got a size range there. Uh, there should be good sizes for everybody the way I've ordered. And there's kind of like a bluish gray with burgundy lettering and then um then these burgundy ones with the white so um yeah so we can appear as as a group and uh i also have some um as a handout some kind of clear uh window decal stickers so that you could put in like the back window of your car type thing let's say with our logo because we wanted to have something other than just QR codes for people to click and and to spread the word. So, if anyone has ideas for that kind of stuff going forward, let me know. I'm just winging it. So, yeah. Thank you so much. They look wonderful. So, yeah, do we know. have extra T-shirts or no? We have. I'm trying to think. How many did I order in total? It's it's um, twenty five, thirty, somewhere like that. Yeah, I, I think I think we ended up with at least two dozen T-shirts and they run men's small. Actually, that's another thing. If each of you could email me what size and what color T-shirt or me and Matt, that would be great. So we have small through two XLs in two colors. So do you want the bluish gray or the red and what size you'll want? It's men's sizing, just standard generic unisex T. Cotton. Oh, Cody, you got your hand up. Yes. No, I do have bad news. Um, I have a work meeting at that same time. You have um, what at the same time? You you have a my work meeting. So okay. okay. I this, so you still get a t-shirt <laughs> also in that email send you my address um yes we'll yeah. figure out how to get the tea to you sure yeah we'll get it to you no problem so i think we divided the shift <clears throat> um is it four to five thirty and then five thirty to set no five to six thirty and then six thirty to seven? I'm sorry, six thirty to eight. So like two two ninety minute shifts ish. But mm -hmm. I mean it's gonna be a pretty free flowing event. So I wouldn't I wouldn't feel like you're, you know, <laughs> time bound to, to work the clock. But um Eleanor did volunteer to do sort of the early, the five to <clears throat> five to six thirty or so. Um, and then I'm wondering if coming I the later. Oh, okay, great, great, awesome. I, I I intend to be there for the duration, and you know, I, I've got to come over and do some setup with some of this stuff as well. So, and, and others coordinated. So, like I said, she told me she was going to be there for the early part. So, I'll go for the late part. So, oh, brilliant. Yeah, but I'll be there in time to overlap, of course. Great. Yeah. 
And Matt's and, going and, to MC for the showcase stage. That's so exciting. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be fun and interesting. I, the kung fu guy already told me his best joke for introducing the kung fu school. So I feel like once you have a good kung fu joke, everything else is just, you know, it's it's just it's downhill from there. So um, <laughs> that'll be fun. And um, yeah, and I think other you know others should feel free to come by the table, grab a chair at the table, you know. So. But I think Kimberly, if we sorry, Kimberly has her hand up. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kimberly. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I just had um a question or two um about one where we go when we get there. Um, like is there's like a specific spot that our booth is gonna be at? And then I also wanted to ask like about like our social media or like how we like use it or promote things on there. We would love help with social media, but I think <laughs> Eleanor could do a great job with that. Is that a matter Eleanor question there? That's me. That's Matt. Yeah. Kimberly, I have to tell you, the burden of the Instagram and Facebook accounts is weighing me down. So if somebody if you if you're willing to step in, I can you know, I let's I can connect with you offline and I would love some assistance with that. It's it's definitely yeah. more than I can handle. Um and and if you know uh so it's on Pleasant Street. So the north end of Pleasant Street, Kendrick Park is sort of the is that park at the north end of it. Mm -hmm. um and our stage is just in front of kendrick park and our let booth me get is right a next graphic for us because you shared it with me earlier and i yes. can share yep. it with everyone so are you guys seeing this now yeah so it's a little bit small i was going to upload it into the chat but we don't um we don't have a chat um i believe we don't right is that correct is there somewhere i can no no i don't see yeah. one either Okay. So, um, yeah, there's, we can email it out too. So there's the main stage and then, um, we're, we're kind of, um, over here by the toy box. So down at the, at the end, this is our showcase stage. And then we've got people with yo-yos and, um, what was the other one? Um, bubbles, right? Uh, balloons. I think balloon balloons. Animals <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll be down this way over here. That's we're, we're number. We're like the first table right there, according to the map, because we're number 33, which is like. Oh, OK. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're, our table's right in front of the toy box, that little strip of stores there. Um, Matt, you already one of either Julian or Matt sent this to us along with the agenda for the meeting. So oh, good. I, yes. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, before. And we're we're actually privileged, you know, because we're sponsoring most of the town like committees and town groups are all going to be at the firehouse parking lot. But because we're sponsoring the stage, we got you know we got a special table next to our stage, so we're we're in kind of a unique spot. Um, the flow, I mean, the flow of traffic really goes pretty freely up and down Pleasant Street because the big thing is that all the downtown restaurants, you know, they just they just literally bring their food out front and serve there. So it's just kind of a I mean it's a block party. Um, so uh, from what point will the road be close to vehicles? Sure. Yeah. So that it's going to be shut down from um, from the intersection of Pleasant Street and Main Street all the way to just past Kendrick Park. To the rotary or not that far? I don't I don't think quite. I don't 100 percent know, but I don't think quite that far. I think it's it might be at the rotary. OK, OK. Um, yeah, I would, so I, I would say, you know, pro tip might be if you're having trouble parking, try the high school parking lot. That's what I would do if I'm not easily getting access. It's, it's pretty, pretty close, not too far. Yeah, good call. Um, okay, so those, I mean, those are the things that I, I really felt like we needed to just sort of get out there. And um, Kimberly, thank you so much again for for volunteering with social media because that's that's something we definitely need help with and um so i think i mean julian unless you i we we julian and i are currently co-chairing and we're also serving as co-treasurer essentially um and i don't know if we're ready to have that discussion quite yet so i'll ask you julian um we we definitely are interested in having more more help with with the treasurer um, and I, I did hear from Rachel. Rachel, would you like to talk a little bit about 
um, and said that uh, that might be of interest for you, or we can table that and move on to the community survey and get back to that at the next meeting. Oh, no, that's fine. I mean, I volunteered because I know that Robin has finished her term and um, since everyone, like you know, I've been here a bit longer, I guess. So I thought, well, maybe I should just step up and do the treasury work. And I have done mm -hmm. treasury work in the past um, in various capacities. So that was just something, you know, I thought I would put my hand up for um, that would be helpful because that is, it's a very, I mean, it, it is, it is a, a necessary part of what we do. Right. So mm -hmm. um, is that, is enough, is that enough to say for now? Um, well, the, 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 yeah, that's certainly enough. I mean, one, one, the, another, um, role that we need to fill would be our secretarial role. We, we need a secretary uh, since Leia left. And all of these roles, whether it's chair, co-chair, treasurer, um, or secretary, uh, the council ha votes on that. So um, we need a, a, a quorum to be president and to vote to, to make anything along those lines official. Now, the treasurer work is... Um, one, it's a great way to really be involved um, and know everybody who's who's working on, on various grants and events and to get to know folks. Um, but it's not something that we just flip a switch because there's there's quite a, a bit of onboarding to to do that, um, which we are happy to do. Uh, so I guess I'd like to ask if, if anybody is interested perhaps in stepping up for treasurer and you know if there's a time when you can't attend uh usually some someone else takes care of that or i believe leah would would grab the recording after and go through and and do the notes that way um it's it's really nothing to be intimidated by we keep pretty um minimal notes um just just who attended time that we started time that we ended um so matt do you have anything to add there well, I just want, I want to make a suggestion, actually, because I know I was the one that started this conversation, but I think because it is a voting matter, we should really um, not take any action tonight and put it yeah, on our yeah, agenda yeah. for next month. Exactly. Um, okay. Right. Perfect. So if anyone is thinking about that, you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out me or Matt or both of us. Um, don't one one uh, rule is in general, don't message the whole council because of the the um, open meeting laws uh but feel free to reach out and uh we can certainly help um answer any questions you might have with that so just to clarify you're looking for volunteers to be treasurer or volunteers to be treasurer as well as secretary yes, yes. okay okay yeah. got it and um before matt has to go i just have a quick question about the block party and, and maybe a suggestion which is are there um a few talking points that you would like all of us to have uh, ready. Excellent, excellent question. I'm I'm going to jump on that. So, <laughs> um, talking points. Our number one thing is to let people know who we are and find out who might be interested in joining us. Um, you know, we currently have one slot available. What what we've learned is, you know, each of us. Uh, generally is appointed for a three-year term unless we're picking up somebody else's term. Um, and then we can elect to stay for another three-year term. There are several of you here. There's no way you're staying for six years, all of you. <laughs> you know, um, when when I joined the council, uh, the the prior chair of the council, you know, when she joined, everybody I think was on average something like 73 years old. So we the the pendulum has swung the other way. It's great to have young young members, um, but with that, uh, what we've found is whether people are in their 30s or 40s or 20s, you know, someone moves, you know, to a new home and it's across the border, and then we're filling it. So we really want to to have a lot of people that are interested in working with us on the council and get to know them. And a few of them we'd like to plug in as soon as possible. Uh, and then others just continue that. So um, the when we're at the event, we can talk about those QR codes as being a way to point people towards, you know, the cultural council's page um, on on the town website and express interest. Uh, and another thing that we've been um, 
really vocal and have been trying to lead about is um, accessibility. And I did print out two um, document, um, a, a document from the MCC about how to make uh, events accessible. It's like a checklist. So that's something, you know, we want to encourage people to apply, but we also want to educate them about what we're looking for. Um, so we can kind of point people towards here's some information and those are kind of laminated hands out that people can pick up and look at while they're at the table. Um, other than that, I would like to bring in another group of high school students um, who, who would be non-voting members. We've, we've lost all our high school students who joined us and that's something we could do pretty quickly. Uh, what am I forgetting, Matt? That would be a, an important topic just other than who we are, what we do and why that matters. My only thought is, and I do have to hop off, I'm sorry, but my only yep. thought is just um, make sure folks know that the grant window is still open yep. and that Julianne will be doing an info session on, on I think it's the following Monday. So yep. um, if they want to learn more, there's a Zoom info session and there's a link on our website. So it's it's kind of, in my mind, it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're looking for potential members and potential grantees. Um, and and I think just basically just just visibility, you know, I think we could be a really special part of, of downtown Amherst. And, um, you know, it's it's just something that, that helps the town. Uh, it helps build community. It helps build economy. I mean, it's just it's good for the town to have strong, um, you know, strong, strong arts and culture institutions. So I think I think, you know, I think we're just kind of PR in general is, is great, too. Yeah. Just just flashing back real quick to this that will be on the, the top of the table, you know. So many people don't know who lived there here all their lives. You know, where does the money come from? It comes from our uh, lottery funds and it's distributed to uh, all of the communities throughout Massachusetts based on need and based on their success um, with uh, funding culture. You know, I guess we kind of get a scorecard as we go. So, you know, we want to speak to who the MCC is and that it's bigger than us um, and, and, uh, let people know that, you know, come on, it's just lottery money. You know, if you've got arts and culture that you want to make happen, you're equally qualified, just like anybody else. And it's a great program we have in this state. Any questions? Good question, Rachel, as always. Okay. I guess Matt has left, huh? He may have. Yeah, I was just I'm trying to get over to look at the participants. All right, Rachel, you are up. Um, I, let's. Uh, Rachel came to us and I guess noted that the MCC has some kind of templates for community surveys, and um, we're, we're always trying to get at the heart of you know, how to best serve the community. And I love that you took the initiative to say, hey, shouldn't we do this? And let me put something together and you're running with it. So tell us more about it. Okay, so um, I don't know if all of you have started receiving, like, you know, Kim Kimberly and Sylvie, have you started receiving the regular newsletters that come from the Mass Cultural Council, or like our contact person, right? So uh, uh, probably six months ago or so, yeah. Um, one of the things they they encourage us to do is to conduct community surveys. They said, you know, these various councils have done community surveys, and we really encourage LCC or local cultural councils to do this. So, um, I at one of our meetings, I said, "Oh, is that something we would like to do?" And then uh, I looked at a, a whole bunch of the samples or, or the other what other uh, local cultural councils have done in terms of surveys, and just um, based on our discussion, develop, uh, developed a very very short survey because some of the local cultural councils do their their surveys like. 18 pages of Google form, you know, and then some are just much shorter. So I thought, well, you know, for our purposes, after we had the discussion, um, we came up with a, a very short to the point survey, which would take people maybe five minutes to do. Um, so I guess at the block party, whoever is there, we, you know, I think the, the other thing I would really encourage us to do is to ask people who are, do they need to be Amherst residents to complete it? In theory, they should, right, Julianne? That would be that would be ideal, but I don't. Is there anything on the survey that asks 
you yeah, know. It, it asks how long have you lived in Amherst? That's okay. Then, okay. then I think it's fine to to just put it put it out there. I don't think we're going to get. Right. Um, yeah, I, I think that's great. So, so one of the things that if everyone who's at the table would would please do is just to ask people if they have done the survey. If they haven't, just ask them to scan the QR code code and do it right there. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I asked about the whole T-shirt thing is, can we offer that as a prize? If you complete the survey, you know, maybe I, I don't know. That's maybe. And then yeah. and that's not know. a bad idea. And then there's yeah, some maybe some something related to social media that we can also offer a couple of t-shirts as prizes. I don't know. Anyway, so so yeah. Kim, you have a question before I go ahead and share the survey. Yeah. Um uh just you talking about how um you have to be a a, a resident of the town of Amherst. I just had a question. What about students who may go to one of the schools in Amherst but don't necessarily live on campus in general? Are they allowed to participate? I believe our I believe for the duration, um, they you are all considered Amherst residents and that's why you're serving on the council, right? Julie? Yeah, it it, it goes kind of like two two ways, you know. So like if if we have someone who's who's been local and, and their permanent, you know, address is their you know, parents' place or whatever, and you know, but they have roommates in Hadley or something. That's their permanent address. They're Amherst residents to that extent. You guys are residing full time here in Amherst, um, but with other council members, it's been to to the point that if somebody moves over into Hadley, you know, and they're no longer, you know, um, in the house that they were in in Amherst, they they have had to resign. So. Um, it's, it's just, you know, each town has their own cultural council. So, uh, it, it seems really, really strict and yet it is the most fair way to, to, to do this because it could get out of hand really, really quickly otherwise. And we fund things, you know, all over the region and a lot of the other cultural councils do the same, you know? Um, so we'll get into that more when we do the, the kind of example grants review and deliberation, but it's, it, yeah, you, you do but, have to be in Amherst. It's okay that you sense. have a permanent address somewhere else. That's fine, but you have to reside in Amherst. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. And then for the, for the survey itself, that's a require question. So, um, shall I just Go ahead and share what we have for the survey now, or do you want to add something, Julianne, before we I was, I'd love to be able to share the link. I was just going to to email it out to the group. I was looking for a reply all because I'm lazy. The link for? The link that you shared with me for the survey. Oh, I could, yeah. Um, do you all have that yet? Who who here has completed the survey? I, I did something during the call, but the, I think that's not... Um, so do, do you want me to, do you want me to share the, what we have so far or do you want to? Yeah. That? If you want to present that, I'm just going, I'm going to just share the link and email right now. So everybody will have it too. That's great. Yeah. So if you all would please um, complete it and ask everyone, you know, who lives in Amherst to please complete it. So I'm going to share my screen and just show what the results we have so far. So the, the survey is going to be op up through I think the 22nd of October, which is right after the grants close so that people have plenty of time to um, complete it. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, you've disabled screen. Oh, wait. Yeah. Here, let me make you, I'll just make you co-host. Um, so I'll share the, the, the kind of results we have right now. And then that way you'll see the questions too. Right. Let's we'll share now, Rachel. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. So can everybody see that? Yes. All right. So, so far we have 17 responses. And so the first question is, how do you hear about local cultural activities that interest you? And here um, are the re the responses so far. Do you, can you all see that? Is that big enough? Okay, great. Let me know um, if I can move on to the second question. So all that applies. So social media is really important right, as we know, um, as we can see from here. And then also brochures, word of mouth. Um, all right, so that's the first question. There are only like five questions altogether. So I'll move on to the next one. What are the most important 
types of projects that our council should consider for grant funding. So here are the different um, options and people were, again, um, we, we asked them to choose top five choices just so that we have, we, we, we know how to prioritize to some extent. Um, any questions? If not, I'll move on, okay? My one question was, I know that um I and maybe Julian and Matt had filled it out, I think, like to test it when we, when in that first call, are those included in this? No, Just, no, okay. because we, um I edited it a little bit after we, we had the tests. So okay. these are actually, are what you call them. Um, they're uh, valid responses, I suppose, like the individual, like, you know, <laughs> genuine. Yes. Uh, yeah, anyway, so. Thank so you. Here are, no, no worries. Um, so here are the, and when you go to do the survey yourselves, you'll see, um, you know, the all of this listed out very clearly. So I'll move on to the next question. Unless somebody... And you should all of hopefully be receiving that, that link via the email. So right. if you have any uh, questions, just, you know, reply back, don't reply all. Yeah, and then the question number three is just the age range of the respondent. Um, and people can opt to not answer. Um, so we have- Yeah, the... we need more responses because it's crazy to have so many 19 to 25 year olds and not so many 26 to 35 year olds. Like, <laughs> so A lot of people don't want us to know how old they are, I guess. Like yeah. almost a quarter of the people. Okay. And then see these two, um, categories, 18 or under. So I think maybe Julianne, you and I can talk to our people we know at the middle school or, you know, mm -hmm. who have students mm -hmm. in middle school or high school to respond. Um, because, yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, because um, one of the categories we have is like, you know, programs of teenagers or children. Right? Yes. Um, yeah. Anyway, so there's no reason elementary school students can't respond to this absolutely we do a, a lot of funding for um but we balance it out but there there is uh you know a good portion of our funds uh support kids so, those get out of school yeah so most of the people who've responded so far are aware that we have these grants but it would be interesting if we got more people to reply whether or not this mm -hmm. changes significantly right yeah um so that and then the last couple of questions is one is for how many years have you been a resident of Amherst? So that's, and that's also a, a required question. Um, so here's the kind of breakout we have so far, which is interesting. And the final question I just threw in for fun um, based on, I saw this at one of the other local councils um, um, surveys is as a town resident, what defines Amherst for you? Oops, sorry. Um, so I'll start at the top and let me know when you're ready for me to move on so you can, you don't need me to read these aloud, do you? I don't think so. Um, oh, go ahead, Kimberly. Um, I was just thinking, I really like the survey and the way it's like laid out and all the questions that we're asking. It. And I was thinking maybe like we should like set a goal or something for like a target number of responses, maybe that we're like aiming for to kind of just help us reach that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like how many responses would we like to to generate or to kind of solicit? Right. Um, are you ready to scroll down? Yeah. Yeah. And one thing in the back of my mind that seems like it'd be super useful to do, and I don't know if we have it in the data, but I think it'd be great to segment some of the responses by age group as we go. Yep. Is if, that possible? Um, yes, for the people who have um, responded with their age, right? If they okay, yeah, them. yeah, that yes. would really be helpful because we can, I mean, download all this information and then kind of, yeah, segment and pre present it in different ways. So there's there's more on the bottom. So let me know when you're ready for me to scroll down again. Small town with large footprint. I love that. You could scroll a little more. I think. Okay. I guess it depends on how small this is on everybody's screens. For how Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. This way you can see the bottom one um, clearly and uh, the whole sentence. I feel like Amherst is a cultural crossroads, that one. Um, just to say, and it's 
we don't even need to be able to see it but when I click on the link that Julianne sent I can't see the responses I just see the no, survey no. no it's it's a fresh survey for each of us to take oh great okay so you That's shouldn't be able to see the responses right yeah. so Rachel's study. presenting the dashboard right now we're hoping that we get a yeah, lot more responses yeah. yeah and then as we after the um grants applications close and um and we regroup um then we'll, we'll be looking at this again. Right. Um, yeah. Cause I think um, as a, I'm the owner of the Google form and that's why I'm kind of sharing all this, but hopefully yeah, it's exactly open, able to it's, see. you said it's open until the 22nd of October. Yeah. Cause I, I, I suggested that we keep it open until after the grants close, just in case that there are people who yeah. are just learning about the survey at the very end. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we're going to need to look at it, whatever we have the week of the 9th. Um, oh, that's fine. We can see what yeah. we have available. And then like, as Kimberly suggested, maybe we have a, a target, like maybe by the end of September, we, we try to get as, you know, this X number, right? Yeah. That's a great so, idea. Uh, uh, we might do that. Cody. Hi. Um, I have obvious Okay. Question, but what? Oh, plans. Uh, what do we plan to do with these results? What do we plan to do with the results? Yeah, so we updated our guidelines starting with um, our grant cycle last year, right? where we put in a little bit more language that, uh, for instance, we want to make sure that, you know, there's there are different kinds of cultural events for different audiences. And so specific to like music, you know, if we have music, we don't want to necessarily have 75% of all of the, the cultural events be just music or, or even within music, you know, that, that there are, you know, different, styles of music that you know speak to different groups that's just one example with with music but this is going to be tremendously helpful for us to understand what people want why they want it which groups want which kinds of things if we can really kind of parse the data that way and and to you know, use that modification that we made to the guidelines to the community's advantage and to, you know, what they're hoping for. Rachel, what what, what do you envision? Yeah, I think, yeah, similar to what you just said. And I think it's it's very, um, uh, it, it, it would, hopefully it, would, it will inform our, priorities going forward as well and and also maybe let us know what other questions we need to be asking because I think we've been um, operating with guidelines that obviously have been amended and 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 adjusted over time um, but I think this is this is really just a really good uh, this is just a way to solicit more input input from the residents whom this impact and for whom we're actually making these grants, right? To, so that these activities can happen. It's it's to serve the community, I guess, is 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 a um a short answer. Cody, does that answer your question? Yeah. I, I think it's really I hope or I know we had a little back in fourth class year. What was too much in what we were funding? Yeah. And just a never idea. Not more long term, but if we see a result that we somehow don't have a whole lot of apple 
like Yeah, that's a great idea that if if people are asking for something and and artists aren't applying to do that kind of thing and you know that's certainly something we can get the word out via social media or just word of mouth outreach to any groups in the area that that do those kinds of things and bring that to the community but we can't do that if we don't know. Right. And I think you know all of all of you I know have a whole lot of uh work and and other responsibilities that um you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, but if anyone's interested, I can send you links to these other surveys that uh, local cultural councils have done. Some of them are so granular that I thought, oh, wow, like, and this is, you know, for example, a town that might get maybe less than $10,000 in grant money to distribute, but they ask very, very specific questions. And I thought that's really interesting. So I think that's a, a little bit of a reflection of the council as well as their their demographics, I suppose. I don't, I don't know. But um, I think I just have a couple of questions before we kind of, you know, finish this, this conversation. One is that if we want to try to get as many responses as we can, I'm wondering if before we break up tonight's meeting, if each of us might be willing to just say I'm going to contact this group or or these people to to get them to help us spread the word or to um get more uh respondents so for example Julianne you and I can contact the local schools right whether it's the high school the middle school elementary school I don't know if I'm putting you up for it could just be a couple of teachers it doesn't have to be like a yeah. full out effort but it's just it could be even just informal so I don't know if that makes sense if people are willing to do that um as one of the or we could just wait until after the block party and see where we are you know what that that's yeah. fine with me because I've got a ton of stuff for the block party and I think the way that that goes I might just bump into some of those folks there exactly. yeah yeah and the word out. And, um, and that's so by just being there and then and then Kimberly yeah. depending on what you know yeah. you and Matt talk about with the social media that's yeah, that's yeah but also very but, effective but for yeah. instance like Cody and I know one of the guys who's uh assistant pr principal I think over at the middle school like Pharaoh like if that's not his thing Cody like he'd know who to mention it to at the middle school right um it's pretty easy to to, to reach out to the right folks and um you know Cody went through the schools too so he might be able to email some folks not that he's not busy as well but um amongst all of us yeah we've got some good connections for that yeah and I think just even you know on a very like informal or actually just a, on an individual basis it could be something a teacher could do in a social studies class or some class yeah. just like class mm -hmm. we're gonna do this now, you know, as an activity, right? That would be kind of a learning experience. Too. And what's great is if you can get the kids to do it and if their parents are willing to, you know, also do it. So you get authentic information from both groups. Yeah. So um, that was one question I had. What was the other question um, related to the survey? Um, I, I guess that's really it. And, you know, if anyone has other suggestions, because, um, you know, um, we can take those on board too. So, so Julian, we want to have, did you say, or did somebody else say that we want to have, be able to look at this in early October? I would like to. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be too, we don't want to eat up time in the actual deliberation meetings, because if we got as many applications as last year, those are, are really tight. And, um, I think we can we can look at kind of a baseline of where it is and then anything else that comes in after that, we can update our information. Uh, and I, I don't ex expect they're going to have all of the data parsed down to, you know, which age group said what and whatever. But let's at, let's at least know how many surveys they were and get a, a top level view um, as we go through our example grants, reviews and deliberation um with some prior year grants to to let everyone get a picture of how the process works 
yeah this is just only one kind of yeah one yeah. one you know level of data right so Kimberly please go ahead um, I just had another suggestion, kind of thinking about this form, it's going to go out and it might be a good way of exposure as it's going to go to different people who might not have heard of this before. So maybe adding, um, I know on some Google surveys, you're able to add like a note at the bottom, maybe something like, thank you for taking the survey, survey if you're interested um, to learn more about the work that we do, maybe like the plug to our website link or Instagram or something. So if someone's maybe seeing us for the first time or hearing about us, they can put in, you know, some work to learn more. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning of the survey, we, when you go to fill it out, you'll see that in the introduction. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't show here. So when you, when you see the actual survey itself, it'll say that at the, at the beginning. And then when you get the confirmation message at the end, it'll come up again to say, here's our website. And please, I think we also, I don't remember if the final version has this, but we say, oh, please share this link with people, you mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. they can complete the survey as well. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Any other genius ideas? Comments? I was going to say, in terms of um, reaching out to people to share with, I know, Rachel, you know a lot of people at the Mead. And if you think that would be, or if they'd be willing to like be sharing that somehow. Um, I just know that they have a lot of community outreach already um, that maybe they'd be willing to help us out. Yeah, thank you. So now that you mentioned the meat, I was actually thinking the farmer's market as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. The meat has a booth there, right? And then there's also I mean, probably a lot of people who go to the farmer's market. What yeah. About just what about that Amherst downtown? I mean, right now they're busy promoting the block party and stuff, but that Amherst downtown Instagram that I think the bid runs maybe... I wonder if there, what's the best way to put that QR code for the survey at all the booths or whoever will have it at their booths? Um, we could, um, I mean, we could, we could make little printouts of the survey to hand out. I don't want to create trash, but, um, so is that something we can do via social media? I don't know. So Sylvie, you have a question or a suggestion? Yeah, well, as far as the QR codes, I'm not sure. Well, I was thinking that if people can just scan it, then just having like a laminated sheet just sitting there, but that might not be addressing the issue. Um, we, do, we do have it on what would be on the, the top of the table for that in, you know, one table, one spot. I, I'm, you know, it's a QR code. I'm going to attach it for everybody here. If anybody has any, um, you know, if you want to include that and in however you're, you're sharing it, that's cool. Um, I don't know if we have time to make stickers and I don't know how many people would want to adhere it to their particular booth. So I don't know if it's worth it to do that, um, but we could print and have a few available for people if you're if you're circulating in the crowd. I guess you know people can put it on their own phone right now that I've sent everybody the link. You can actually just save it as a photo and go here, click this. So maybe that's the better way to do it um, if you're talking to someone. Okay. And if if the block party organizer, whatever, um, you know, with their social media feeds, um, they've got they've got something going on about the block party, right? If they, if that could be appended or somehow connected to that, I am as, uh, as big as our block party or, is. I don't know. I am not going to add any more stress to anyone who okay, is got already it. locked stop step with like getting yeah. getting this event, you know up and going and, and done. So here's a um, t-shirt for a prize. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, no, thank you. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, as we circulate, you know, and talk to people, we can certainly, you know, share that and we should get it out on our own social media and all that as well. I think it maybe has happened. I'm really out of the loop with that. I apologize. Any other questions, comments, more ideas? Okay. Uh, Great, then I believe we can um, conclude this meeting. And um, I'll thank second you. that motion. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, thanks everyone for staying a little little longer so we could go into this. I think it's gonna be great. Um, yeah, so 
uh, feel free to, to reach out. Everybody who we can see on Thursday, great. Otherwise, we'll be in touch to um, organize schedules. So take care, everyone. Thank you. Thursday. Yeah. Bye. Bye.